to get here from usually a long way away. Who drove here last that in their quarter? I was in their quarter. If you drove here, so right, I'll go in your trailer, I don't count. Yeah, right, your quarter. Who drove here less than 25 miles from here? Anybody? There's a couple of hands up. We're going to get you next to you. Who drove over and drove their quarter? Now, this is a straight line. If you went and visited your inn in Mississippi, before you drove to Denver, you know, when you started out New England, it doesn't count. I mean, we're talking like Nat West Line from your address to the whole town. Who drove over 500 miles to get you? Raise your hand. Well, 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 well. Oh, yeah, definitely. Raise your hand or stand up there. Stand up there. Stand up there. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. You are all over the two guys in the house. You can anybody better that? We have only one man standing. In your court there, 2,000 miles from your home to this location. Tell us who you are and where you're from. Uh, from Guadalajara, Mexico. And you are? Uh, What's your name? Uh, my name is Donel Monastello. Sir, you win the, the longest in the Write it down. Yeah, give it to me. 
If somebody had a problem, I don't know about it, sir, get ready to So, Barry Breston and Marty Thomas, you guys need to print a little better. <laughs> so, Gary's 1965 Monza 154 speed from Helena on Dan. We made it over 700 miles and built a fuel pump. We think it was the fuel pump. Failed in Cheyenne, Wyoming. More than 100 miles from Denver. We arrived late Wednesday afternoon. But we had a... Uh, we've been enjoying everything here immensely. We met some nice folks and had seen some great cars. Good show. Okay. So they had a little problem they got here. Uh, Michael Delinas in Calgary, Canada. Look, we came to Denver a day earlier to do some mountain sightseeing. Monday we drove to the Heights Peak Highway. We had lunch in Estes Park and drove west into the Rocky Mountain National Park. It was very hot that day. We stopped at many places along the parks and all the lookouts. And we start located from all home, but did not go more than a quarter mile before experiencing normal problems. We assumed that the dreaded big road. No <laughs> way, never had any of these problems in Canada with real Canadian kids. <laughs> <laughs> the major called in the AAA and we had to wait. Phil and Joan from Pennsylvania had stopped by to help on their way up. And uh, we kindly declined their help because we had already called the turn later. Three hours later, when they were coming back down from the back of the mountain, <laughs> and we were still sitting on the side of the road, they stopped again, and we said, yeah, we'll take your job. So we, we replaced the fuel pump with a no one would use one, and uh, Phil confirmed the fuel line from the tank was not obstructed. At that we can still taste it, 91. <laughs> We find the cars from a uh, can of carburetor spray and observed a badly leaking fuel pump. We typed it up and we got the car running and Phil and Joe followed us all the way back to Denver. They were very kind people indeed. Not a really hard luck story, just an inconvenience. But a good learning experience for me. And uh, no, we did not continue all the way up to the back of the mountain. So, Michael Delinas from Calgary, Canada. And Brian, by the way, you understand me. Okay, we have a short one here. This is uh, July 20th, 9 p.m. Left rear wheel came off car on Interstate 70, 20 miles from Kansas City. Now, it doesn't say in this little cryptic note I've got up here, but I do happen to know it wasn't because the lug nuts were loose on there. The lug nuts were still connected to the lug stud, which was still connected to the spindle, which was still connected to the brake drum, but the rear wheel bearing burned up to a crisp, and all the parts melted down, and the spindle melted into nothing in the wheel. Oh. Uh, but, but, thanks to the Kansas City Four Bear Club, and in that particular Ace French, Mike Dawson, if my car breaks down, I want to be here in Kansas City, let me tell you. <laughs> Thanks to Mike Dawson and the Kansas City Quarter Club, I was back on the road at 9 a.m. Wednesday morning. Here we go. This one comes from Phil Lemery and Joanne Lemery, driving the final leg of the grueling road rally. And we won't get in. I dropped the valve seat on cylinder number five. Like any old competitor, I kept going. Remember, don't stop. Don't stop for anything. I kept going without even a look to see. Having only five cylinders left, it kind of hurt me in the autocross. I came in a solid last place in class, but uh, kept on going. Phil Levery, uh, valve seat problem. Phil? Here's one that I don't have to decipher because somebody actually printed it out on a hotel office kind of here, here, so it's kind of handy. Hard lot. This one comes from Jerry Berger from the Chicago, Illinois. 
Hard luck is not really the right way to describe what I encountered at the Denver Convention. I think it is better described as hard luck with a whole lot of good luck story. The drive from Chicago was pretty uneventful other than a long traffic delay in Iowa, and of course, very hot temperatures. Yes, I was one of the cars that dropped the valve seat after arriving at the hotel and driving next door to get gas. And yes, it was pretty aggravating since I had planned a full week of events and as a full competitor, hadn't had any problems with the car previously. I had driven into the Ventura Dimension, Cedar Rapids, Jacksonville, all with no issues. But when I heard that clack, 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 I knew I was in for trouble. What makes this is a good luck story, hard, hard luck story though, is that if you have a problem with a quarter, the best place to be at is at a convention with your quarter family. Within a couple of hours, I was talking to East mechanic Steve Goodman of the Denver Club. <laughs> Which, by the only way, the other place, the only other place that I would like to have my car break down is Steve's place or my dog's place. He talked to Steve of the Denver Club, who located the head and started working out the freshened up. In a flash, Jim Allen, Rick and Mather, and Ray Morales had set up a workshop in the parking garage underneath there by Ray's trailer, and by the following evening, a, a reconditioned head was delivered by Steve. Then the Porter family sprung into action. Craig cranked up the generator for the lights. Rick and Jim had their hands on the tools. The head was in. They didn't even let me touch the tool. Uh, in retrospect, it was probably a good thing. <laughs> Thirty hours later, I let the valve seat fell out. The smooth running 67 miles of pulled out of the garage. All that's left is the oil spot on the garage floor. <laughs> 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 It's always disheartening to have a problem with your car, but my good luck story is that there's no better place to have that problem than with your man. Thank you. Because you wrote the best story, and in fact, not only did you have a problem, but you fixed it, and you got it going, and you ran all the events. Where are you, Gary? Gary Connery. To help that make it a little less painful, uh, we have, uh, thanks to Clark Square Cards who sponsors our Hard Luck Trophy, a $100 gift certificate, and that will help you pay back for the parts that you had to buy. There you go. Here you go, Jerry. There you go. Hard luck trophy. Hope that doesn't happen on your way home. Remember, you all have a long way to go back home. Be careful. Be safe.